was um an interview on Bootleg Kev's podcast. And you said it was problem, right? Yeah, problem. <laughs> he so, now goes as Jason Martin, though. He's oh, buddy. yes, he changed his name. Yeah, changed I'm sorry. His name. So yeah. he went on the podcast, mm-hmm. and we might play the clip, or I could just summarize it. But he basically was recounting the night that Family Matters dropped, that Drake dropped Family Matters. And then he was like, yo, I texted Kendrick, like, oh, you hear this? Like, yo, oh my God. And Kendrick texted him back, like, yeah, I've been waiting for him to drop something. I've been waiting for him because I have, like, three songs prepared for him. And then, okay, well... I'm listening to fucking Meet the Grams, and I'm just like, I ain't gonna hold you. I'm gonna give you some real insight. Is you hearing this first? They drop Family Matters, and I text him, I'm like, this ain't it. He's at, like... At all. I, I'm like, this ain't gonna get it. I was like, man, it's time to step on his head. He was like, say less. I didn't... I'm thinking we just text. It ain't nothing deep like that. It's... Right. I go to the bathroom. I come back. The motherfucking song is uploaded. I said, wait, 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 wait. I text him like, nigga, you already... He's like, man, I've been waiting for this nigga to drop something. So he didn't even know what he was going against. Man, Drake shot a video and all this shit, man. Went that boy was sitting at the Dodge crib. Caravan. Boom, boom. You listen. Suck the life out of the whole moment for Sometimes Drake. Sometimes you just got to know what to do and what not to do. Some yeah. people... So after that clip, that went pretty viral. I saw an interesting tweet and I'm, I'm excited to talk about it with the guys because I don't know how I feel about this yet. It said, remove all bias for two seconds, everybody. Can you imagine Drake pre-recorded all of his disses, didn't rebuttal any of Kendrick's bars, didn't address the accusations and rapped about Kendrick having a fake daughter for four minutes? Like, are we really gassing this up? So I thought about it. I was like, that is true. Like, Kendrick did pre-record a bunch of things and just decided then when to drop um what to drop based on like what he what family matters said but like he didn't really rebuttal directly what anything that drake said in family matters and then the whole fake daughter thing turned out to just like kind of not land no one talks about it now so what do we think like is like pre-recording songs a good strategy move or was it kind of like hey in hindsight like is, that's not really uh you didn't rebuttal anything so i don't know how i feel about it personally that's how i feel if Drake would have took the same approach Kendrick Lamar took, <laughs> I would have been crowning him the winner. I think people are trying to attach their fandoms or, like, a lot of people hate Drake right now, right? Like, it's very cool. It's very easy to hate on Drake right now. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of people are just finding new ways to be like, but wait, but what about this? But we're moving the goalposts. And I, okay. and I respect that. Mm-hmm. I, I truly do because that's what fans do. Yeah, they're just... I promise y'all, if Drake would have taken the approach, fuck that. If Drake was in the same scenario that Kendrick Lamar was in, in terms of how he grew up, how he was raised, um, his background, et cetera, and the things he could pull from his bag, he would have been Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> and this is very clear. I, I, I'm not attaching this to one person. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to take this back to my battle rap point. I've seen so many battle raps. <laughs> I've seen so many battles as a kid, right? Mm-hmm. I still, to this day, haven't seen a battle rap where where when they write something, they're directly responding to what was written. Like battle rappers, they're probably given a few months, probably given a month, no matter how, depending on how long, you know, it is until the battle, and they, and they write. Both artists don't know what's being written about with who mm-hmm. until they get to the battle. You get what I'm saying? So in the battle, some people are crafty enough to have rebuttals within what they wrote. Mm-hmm. Some people... Oh, and it applies. And it applies. Okay, Some people okay. are just crafty enough like that, and I salute mm-hmm. them for it. That's, you get extra points. Kudos. Salute. But everybody knows with battle rap, you're coming to write something. And whatever you wrote is what you got to present. Now, because that's what you wrote, hey, hopefully it holds up in court now that the battle has started. Mm-hmm. Wait, you mean in, in battle rap, you're showing up with something already written? Absolutely. Okay. That's like a known thing for people that don't know. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's like a thing already, right? Like, they already know what they're going to spit. That's why, like, when they fuck up, they're repeating it. They're going back to stanzas. Mm-hmm. They know how they want to start the first round, the second round, and how they want to close the third. You yeah. feel me? Mm-hmm. So, to answer that, for me, I, this was a rap battle, so I'm always going to mm-hmm. take it back to that. And... I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I guess like I was I was like, oh, it is true that he didn't like directly rebuttal the things that Drake said in Family Matters. But now I think about it, Kendrick was just like very prepared. Like it was it was just preparation. And I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I've heard Joe say this a lot of times. I've heard other rappers say it too. Put your T. Um, but sometimes rappers, they just have a list. And on that list are other rappers that I potentially see as a threat. A nigga I may not like, or somebody who is just very dissable. 
<laughs> yeah. And on that list, I'm always gonna have something in the talk. Like the higher quality MCs, the the real wordsmiths of this game, like the people who who are students of this game. A lot of our heart styles, P talk about it. They all have a list of of artists where if he says one thing about me, I'm on his ass. Up. If he looks wrong at me at the after party, I promise you, I got mm-hmm. 89 bars <laughs> coming his way. The game, so. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think, mm-hmm. like Alex said, today's climate, today's hip hop fan, they try to move the goalposts for who it is that they want to and see. I get win. it. They fan, yeah, they fans. I but in the it. essence, but... in the reality of hip hop, like this is still war. This is still a battle. This is still strategy. So if you came underprepared, you knew that there was underlying smoke between us. So for you not to have anything prepared is a flaw on your end. This didn't just pop up. Right. Back to respecting, uh, respecting your opponent, right? Exactly. You know? This didn't just pop up. So this has been brewing. And both of them have acknowledged in their exchange that this has been brewing. This is not something that just came Absolutely. off of the like that record, and, off of first person shooter. And not for nothing, maybe he had that strategy for that round. Because I, I don't remember what song it is right now. It feels like that was just yesterday and I still can't remember. But there was one of those songs where Kendrick is saying on the song, yeah, you were so predictable. Like I knew you was going to go to talk about uh, my girl and this and that. So oh, yeah. I don't know if that was pre-recorded or he heard what you did. And was it six sixteen in LA? It might have been six sixteen. Be, yeah, I'm forgetting now. It feels like a national holiday. But... Uh-huh. But yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not docking yeah. anybody points for being prepared. Right. I'm not docking anybody points for doing their homework. Right. Like you study for the test, and when the test came, you passed. <laughs> you had something in the tuck. You were ready for this. I was prepared for this. You, I don't and, know. I, I get the point I'm of like being. Pre- okay, yeah, yeah. No, you go first. No, I, I was just gonna say. But do you give points? How much points do you give to somebody to create something in the moment and then have it land? Also, that's what. But that's what I'm thinking about because it's like for half the song, his big kicker, his pr- preparedness was about the secret daughter <laughs> that like did not land, in my opinion, because people just kind of like. Was like, eh, this is true. I don't think it was <gasps> his big kicker. In that song, I think it was. It was oh, like, that oh my song? God. Yes, and... yes, my fault. You're right. Yeah, Meet the Grams. Right. And like, yeah. I thought you meant the scope of the battle. I, yeah, I understand yeah. he had. And then, mm-hmm. because it didn't land, I feel like Kendrick kind of was like, oh shit, is this doing what I thought I was going to do? And yeah. then, boom, he did not like us, and then he won. Yeah. So that is strategy, and then, so he deserves a win. <laughs> but, I don't know, like, I understand... It was preparation, but mm-hmm. there's, just, there's just like little nuances in well, it still, I feel like. Mm-hmm. DJ Head and Charlemagne. Um, Charlemagne was on DJ Head's podcast, a radio show. Mm-hmm. And shout out to DJ Head. He's been like killer, the, the mouthpiece for all of LA and, and mm-hmm. everything that he says seemed to be factual. So DJ Head told Charlemagne that everything that Kendrick said in Meet the Grams was true from Heard Kendrick that. Lamar. That's right. what Kendrick told him. Right. Right. Now, Kendrick hasn't done the internet games much. He hasn't gotten there, defended his name. He's not dropping memes. He's not doing that. So as of right now, the culture that we go to when we want to get that type of information from mm-hmm. that camp is DJ Head. Mm-hmm. So whatever is true, whatever is not true, we don't know because we still don't know any of the shit that Drake said is true or not. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. And that's why I brought it back to battle rap. All these niggas do is lie. <laughs> yeah, you did say that. <laughs> and it's when, it's yeah. all about the delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, like new rap fans, I understand how all this shit is being skewed and mm-hmm. why they want to mm-hmm. fight hard on Twitter. I get it. I'm with you, but you gotta understand where a lot of this, where a lot of this shit originated. If you understand the origins, of the, origins of this shit, man, you won't be as confused as to why people have chose a winner or a victor, etc. But and honestly, I think that yeah. is super dope. Yeah, when you have a whole song dedicated to a nigga what? that you don't like, you mean Pharrell? Like, <laughs> you mean Pharrell? Just waiting, bro. <laughs> Imagine you dislike somebody so much yeah. that on your hard drive there's just venom, <laughs> <laughs> ready to and go. You know, at any given moment, I can just venom. press this button, nah, and it will fly like fry your whole life. Like, I, I, I fuck with that. Evergreen like venom is crazy. That's like, pure diabolical. Yeah, just hatred. to have that in like, the cut. Like, I really don't like you. I yeah. really, I really don't like this guy. And I'm just waiting for the day for him to just do one. Just look at me the wrong way. No, just say, the, say anything. I kind of want to hear all the other joints Kendrick had on. You say he had more did he stock. Re- did he really? Oh, no, he didn't release all of them? Nah, no. after Not Like Us, he just cooled out. Yeah. Well, so it was a win. Um, at the time of us recording this, the Juneteenth Kendrick and Friends uh, pop-out event in hasn't LA, happened. it hasn't happened yet. Oh so, my goodness. We don't know what could come of this. I don't feel like this is over. I don't feel like Kendrick is done. I don't feel like Drake is done. Mm-hmm. I think Drake did the right thing by falling back. Maybe he's regrouping. Maybe he's retooling. I have no idea. But heard somebody like. You heard new music? I heard new music is coming. Well, he's dropped new music. 
He's dropped. Summer, nah, summertime not, vibes. Solo, solo, solo song. I'm okay. hearing his solo music. I heard like a video, video is shot and all that. Like yeah. to do with the battle, or just like him trying to like. I don't know, but I know it's something else. Solo Drake music. I think Wednesday, yeah. and by the time this comes out, it already have has passed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm curious to see what that looks like, and I'm curious to hear how we will sound of how we will feel <laughs> next week when we record nah, because it's so many different variables with that concert. Like you could bring out all of the people who don't fuck with Drake. This Damn. could be a less take a victory lap on this light skinned Canadian guy, <laughs> or yeah. it could just be hey, I just want to connect with my fans, and I'm not even going to acknowledge Drake. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know yet. Yes, you do. I really don't. Yes, it's Monday do. when we're recording this. I have no clue. You ain't see them gang members he was hanging with he's always with gang members i know they in la at the forum how many gang members you think gonna be in there it's gonna be a lot they say the meet. They say the Chris Brown meet and greet. Okay, okay good little callback. Okay. This, this is, oh, he liked it. This is not the Chris Brown meet and greet. Ain't gonna be meeting and greeting. Yes, if you want a good Chris Brown meet and greet, come uh, August seventeenth. <laughs> Need to know, mixer. Brooklyn, New York. Get your ticket. <laughs> but now nah, we know what that shit gonna come with, and I can't wait for us to really recap that shit because that's gonna come with a lot. 